Hello and welcome to video number six in my series of videos which are a response to an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson regarding the flat earth by D. Murphy 25. In this video I'm only going to deal with one question, question seven out of twelve questions and it concerns the artificial horizon or attitude indicator on airplanes. Question seven. Why doesn't the artificial horizon on a plane roll backwards during straight and level flight? The artificial horizon is based on a gyroscope. And when a gyroscope spins, it resists movement away from the axis of spin. As for rigidity in space, the spinning rotor remains in its original attitude while the gimbal and the base move around it. In other words, the gyro maintains its axis in relation to space and not to the surface of the Earth. If a gyro moves around the Earth, its axis is vertical to the Earth's surface here, at an angle here, and horizontal here. The gyro will resist any force that attempts to change its plane of rotation. So the artificial horizon is essentially a gyroscope mounted on gimbals to allow it to stay upright as the plane pitches and rolls. So as the plane flies straight and level and rounds the curvature of the Earth, the gyroscope in the artificial horizon will remain upright with respect to where it was first spun up to speed and the indicator will appear to roll backwards and indicate the climb. Now, I asked the pilots of the last flight I was on, and they told me that the artificial horizon has GPS and sophisticated electronics that adjust the indicator depending on where they are on Earth. But when I contacted the manufacturer, I was told that it is a purely mechanical device. No GPS, no electronics, and it hasn't changed in basic design since before the advent of electronics. So, why doesn't the artificial horizon roll backwards as they round the curvature of the Earth? Right, um, so his concerns with, is with this artificial horizon or attitude indicator and the fact that a gyro will remain would retain its rigidity in space as it moves around, which is true. Now, I'm not an expert on this stuff, so I had to do a little bit of reading for myself and looking about. And there is loads of stuff about this um, all over the internet. There's loads of it. Now, I don't know what the pilots were saying to him or what he asked them. Maybe they didn't understand what he meant. Maybe they were just humouring him. Maybe the attitude on indicators on these big commercial airliners do work with off GPS. I don't know. But I'm going to talk about the kind of mechanical artificial horizons he's talking about. Um, now, first of all, this clip that he's used from a, an old 1960 uh, training film from the US Navy Let's look at a clip later on in the same video. Another disadvantage comes from the gyro's tendency to drift away from its original attitude. There are two types of drift. One is mechanical, due to friction in the bearings. This is actually a form of precession. The other type, known as apparent drift, relates to rigidity in space. Once again, consider this condition. The gyro maintains its attitude while the Earth turns under it. Every six hours, the gyro drifts through 90 degrees in relation to the Earth's surface. In order for the gyro instrument to be dependable, drift must be corrected continuously. There are several types of erection systems that correct for drift. The principle back of all these systems is based on three steps. The direction and degree of drift are measured by electrical or mechanical sensing elements. These elements then control 
the application of a proper force to the gyro, and it precesses back to its normal attitude. Now, in the very same video that he's taken a clip from, it goes on to explain that these attitude indicators have mechanisms for making sure the gyro stays in the vertical position. Now, also, it mentions the fact that there is apparent drift, which is what he's talking about, and mechanical drift. Now, mechanical drift would happen on a flat earth and a spherical earth. So, the way he's simplistically presenting this instrument as if it would just work on a flat earth is wrong. It would require a correction system on a flat earth and a spherical earth because gyros drift especially when they're used in an instrument like this, where there are going to be a lot of forces acting on them. So they would drift from the vertical position. And further to this, how do you set it to the vertical position if there's no gravity anyway? I mean, supposedly there's no gravity according to these flat earthers. So how do you set it to the vertical position anyway? How do you know what the vertical is? Um... Now, it's clear if you watch the rest of this video, now, all the things I use here, I'll put links um, to them in the information. It's clear if you watch this video that this video is all about how this works on a spherical Earth. It goes into detail of how the heading indicator is, um, works and how, that correct, how that's corrected. Um, but anyway, I'm going to talk about the artificial horizon, the basic kind of mechanical one he's talking about. Uh, so here is an installation manual and operating instructor, instructions for the 4200 series electric attitude indicator. There's two basic types of attitude indicator. One is an electric one where the gyro was powered electrically, and another one is... Uh, one that uses air to keep the uh, the gyroscope spinning. Right, so let's go down and have a look at a few things that it says. So the first thing here, physical description. The electric attitude indicator incorporates pitch and roll displays that are mechanically linked to a spinning mass gyroscope. The horizon bar moves behind the symbolic airplane. Precession error is corrected by the 4200's erection system or by pulling the pull to cage knob. Now I'll explain a bit more about this pull to cage um, feature that these, that, that particularly these older ones have. I, I don't know if the newer ones need to have these pull to cage things because they're used to protect the instrument when the plane does um, a really extreme manoeuvre, like say loop the loop or something like that. It wouldn't. It would, could could it could damage the older ones. I think the newer ones. I'm not sure they really need that. But anyway, it also says the electric attitude indicators employ an efficient electrically driven internal vertical gyroscope assembly, incorporating a special air erection mechanism. This mechanism simultaneously erects the pitch and roll axis of the jet of the gyroscope. So it has a mechanism which keeps the gyroscope aligned to the vertical. Um, I also want to mention this. So it says initial erection, the pull to cage knob will erect the gyroscope to within two degrees of case vertical and roll and pitch from any position at any time. Now what this does is, and I'll show you in a video of someone doing this, you there's some kind of mechanism inside it whereby if you pull this pull to cage knob, what it'll do is it will align the artificial horizon with the the symbolic airplane that's on the front of it. So there'll be some kind of like motif or symbolic airplane on the front. 
And if you do this operation, it will make the artificial horizon align with it. So if the cage is vertical, this will put the gyroscope into the vertical position. Now, the vertical gyroscope should be allowed to spin up for three minutes after rated power is applied and after initial erection. After five minutes, the final erection accuracy of pitch and roll will be within one degree of the vertical. So you start by using this pull to cage mechanism, then you let it spin for a while and the mechanism inside it will have the gyro within one degree of the vertical. Now it uses gravity to do this. So how it would do this on the flat earth, I don't even know. Um, now there's one other thing it says here I wanted to draw your attention to. No, like I said, I'll put links to all of this so you can read this yourself. Now, it says if caging is required, caging should be accomplished when the aircraft is in a wings level normal cruise attitude, as indicated by other instruments on the horizon. So the pilot has other ways of knowing if the plane is flying level. So if they know the plane is flying level, they can manually adjust, um, you can manually set the artificial horizon so that it's vertical, so that the gyroscope is vertical. If the gyro is caged when the aircraft is not in this attitude, so if you are pitching up or down or rolling, the resulting attitude presentation immediately after caging will be an error by the difference between the true vertical and the actual aircraft attitude. Small errors in caging erection will be corrected by the indicator to true vertical pitch and roll at 2.5 degrees per minute. So it will, it will, even if you do it, you don't get it right, it will correct it itself. Now here's a video on YouTube of someone demonstrating one of these instruments. So first of all, they power it up. Okay, so you can see that the artificial horizon here is here and it's not aligned with this symbolic aircraft on the front. Now, since this is on a vertical surface, you can use this pull to cage mechanism to make the artificial horizon line up with the symbolic airplane on the front, which the person does. So they're demonstrating roll here, which is the plane turning from side to side. So this would be pitching up. So the plane is now flying up and you can see when it pitches up, the artificial horizon goes down. See, when it pitches up the way you can see Sorry, he's pitching down now. This would be corresponding to the plane flying down. And you can see that the artificial horizon moves up above the symbolic airplane on the front. Uh, so that's the caging mechanism. Now, as was said, there's also uh, a mechanism within, within it which will keep the gyroscope aligned to the vertical. Now, gyroscopes have got unusual properties, and one of them is this thing called precession, which means if you apply a force to it, the gyroscope can turn at 90 degrees to the force applied, which is demonstrated here. Here we go. Let's see what this gyroscope wants to do if you try to spin it in this axis. Here we go. I'm going to try pushing the gyroscope the other way pushing the right hand side of the gyroscope towards you and you're going to see what's going to want to do. Now this property is used in 
one of the mechanisms for um, erecting the gyroscope to the vertical, which is a system called pendulous veins, and it uses air jets, which are opened or closed as the gyro turns. And these air jets exert forces on the gyroscope, which make it process back to the vertical. And I'll show you in more detail in these videos how it does this. Now, this is a really interesting video, um, really good channel. I can highly recommend if you're interested in um, aviation, where uh, they discuss the artificial horizon. An Earth gyro has its spin axis XX tied to or maintained in the vertical by the Earth's gravity. And in this diagrammatic representation, we can see that the gyro rotor is attached to the inner gimbal, whereas the outer gimbal will be attached to the instrument case. The way it works is that if the aircraft should now pitch up, the outer gimbal, which is in effect attached to the aircraft, and therefore the gullwing motive, will rotate about the axis YY. A guide pin protruding from the vertically stabilised inner gimbal forces the horizon bar down. The movement is magnified by the length of the horizon bar arm, indicated here. I have to say this is one thing, I'm not entirely sure how this mechanism works, because when this turns, it, the artificial horizon bar turn moves down the way like this. Uh, so I'm not quite sure exactly how this guide pin thing works, but it obviously does. And the result is that the horizon bar is now below the gullwing motive, and the indication on the instrument is that the aircraft has pitched up. In roll... So they then go on to talk about roll, um, but what I want to do is have a look at what this video says about this um, mechanism using uh, what are called pendulous veins and air jets. The Earth gyro in the artificial horizon or attitude indicator may be air driven or electrically driven. Let's look at the air driven version first and the errors associated with it. In the air driven artificial horizon, the spin axis of the Earth gyro is tied to the Earth vertical by a system of pendulous veins and air jets. Any tendency for the gyro to topple is counteracted by the precessed reactive force from the air jets. The centre of gravity of the gyro is also kept below its pivot point on the inner gimbal to assist in keeping the gyro vertical when not in use. Let's look at how it works in more detail. If we look at a diagrammatic view of the gyro and rotor housing, we can see that at the base of the rotor housing, there are four air exhaust ports. Each port is partially covered by a pendulous vane, which we will call A, B, C, and D. Air is exhausted through the partially open ports. And when the gyro rotor is vertical, the air being exhausted through the ports will be of equal and opposite pressure. However, should the gyro rotor axis wander from the vertical, the pendulous veins on opposing sides of the rotor housing move, so that as one vein closes, the other one fully opens. In our illustration here, the gyro rotor is toppling and we can see that by gravity, vein B has closed, while vein D has fully opened. The result is that the air pressure escaping through the opposing port D will no longer be balanced, and the excess reactive force is precessed through 90 degrees in the direction of rotation of the rotor to re-erect the gyro. Note. It is usual for air-driven gyros to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction when viewed from above. Yeah, so this is basically just explaining that if it goes to one side, there are these pendulous veins, and I'll show you what they actually look like. They close one air jet and make one the other one open more. And like I say, when you apply a force, 
like this guy does here. It makes it turn at 90 degrees. So that's basically what's going on. So you, there's a force pushing against D because there's an air jet, which makes it turn towards A. And in this video, you can actually see inside a real one and you can see these pendulous veins. So now I've assembled the, the rotor into its chamber, into its case there, uh, with the single nut there, and have reassembled these little copper strips, copper pendulum strips you might call them, um, and these open and close little air slots for the air exhaust, and this is how the gyro stabilizes itself uh, after start. I think the, 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 the gyro, the rotor will stay vertical throughout, and then the aircraft will move around the gyro. So it, as the aircraft moves around the gyro, we see that uh, the display at the front here will move up and down. Um, and it's moved by a little, a little pin attached to the, to the chamber, to the gyro chamber, and that little pin moves in a, in a slot here and moves the display up and down in pitch. And is, is, um, uh, right, there's another little bell you can watch, um, which is worth watching, which is about here. Let's have a look at how these pendulous veins work. So at the bottom here, we've got these copper strips, and they're called pendulous veins, and they work with these exhaust slots, and they work to uh, to align the the gyro with with gravity. Uh, we want we want the gyro to be spinning uh, with this with the top up, pointing away from the centre of the earth. So the whole assembly is, is well balanced so that it, uh, it, it is, not, is not susceptible to G as a whole. So when, when uh, you first start the aircraft and the vacuum pump starts, the gyro might be in this orientation. Um, and, and here we see that, uh, here we see which way around the gyro is going. The gyro is spinning at a very high RPM in that direction inside this, this case. And so if it starts up like this, like that, then uh, here we've got uh, a slot, an exhaust slot exposed, um, and that should that would be the only one that is exposed. On the other side, the pendulous vein will be closing this slot on the other side. So here we've got the the slot exposed, so air is squirting out of here, generating a little thrust. There's an equal and opposite thrust onto the case. Uh, but that thrust is applied 90 degrees later because of precession. So it's applied uh, 90 degrees down this way. And so the force acts like this to, to uh, close that slot, to move the um, the gyro chamber and and the pendulous vein will then close that slot. Right, so that's basically that mechanism. It just uses little copper strips that will turn because gravity is holding them down, and they open and shut little air vents that exert forces on the the gyro to right it up to the vertical. Uh, now. This video here, if you want to watch it, it goes on to explain another mechanism for electric uh, gyroscopes. And um, it also it goes into quite a big discussion about various errors and how forces and acceleration in the aeroplane can affect the, the, the heading, the, sorry, the artificial horizon. Anyway, it's clear the the gyroscope inside these instruments is automatically adjusts and kept vertical so there's no problem with it flying around the earth now 
if I could find this out, why is it that flat earthers don't seem to be able to find this information when it's all over the internet? It just it just makes you wonder, are these people serious? Is this just a joke and I don't get it? But anyway, that's how artificial horizons or attitude indicators work. 